regardless of the winner of Saturday Saturday's fight, would you go for undisputed against Bivol? Not necessarily, but again, I mean they all have managers and so forth, and we'll we'll uh, we'll talk it out. I mean, one great possibility is the English kid Yard, who's a terrific light heavyweight and is coming here to watch the fight. And if it was Anthony Yard, would you want that fight here or in the UK? Well, if it was Yard, probably it belongs, it would be huge in the UK. The greatest what? promoter in boxing. Hey, Jerry. Jerry Cooley, great to see you. Jerry, I love to see you up there. You. Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, with uh, you guys do still re represent uh, Bud Crawford, correct? No. Not anymore. No, not anymore. Our contract expired uh, sometime last year after the uh, Porter fight. But that doesn't mean he isn't a terrific fighter. The the young Nico Ali Walsh is here. You worked in this building with his grandfather. What does it mean to you to be able to work with him? Well, terrific. You know, it's not only working with him. I mean, he's a great young man. He graduated from uh, UNLV with uh, honors. I mean, a very, very intelligent kid. And his mother, uh, I've known since she was a little girl, right? Ali's daughter. So, you know, I'm rooting for him. And uh, he's getting better and better. And I think now he's made an alliance with Coach K, uh, who will be his uh, uh, principal uh, trainer. So I, I, I look for great things from Nico. What does it mean for you to be in New York City uh, on ESPN two weeks in a row? Well, this is my home. I mean, it's my home, not for paid taxes, but it's my home in my heart. Uh, and uh, even though I'm, I live in Las Vegas, uh, I love to come back to New York uh, because uh, New York is where my heart is. I mean, everybody who I know will tell you that I root like crazy for the Yankees and the, the football giants, uh, the Rangers. I mean, I can't get New York out of my blood. Uh, we have a big Anthony Joshua Usyk fight coming up. Would there be interest in top rank, you know, talking to Tyson, getting him out of retirement to fight the winner of that fight? Well, I don't think Tyson's in retirement. Let's see what happens. Let that fight happen. Uh, Eddie Hearn is promoting that fight. Uh, hopefully that fight goes off before the beginning of September. And then we'll take a look at the situation. When you say you don't think Tyson is really in, uh, retired, what do you know that that outside boxing fans and, and, and fans of the sport don't know? Nothing. But except I know Tyson and I know the history of great fighters after they've won a couple of big fights saying they're retired, uh, they don't <laughs> retire. Obviously, the greatest did that, um, and so many people after him. Uh, do you think Tyson beats both Joshua and Usyk if they were to fight? Absolutely. I think Usyk may be a little bit more difficult than Joshua, but I think he just beats both of those guys. As someone who has saw the greatest and the greatest in the heavyweight division, how do you rank Tyson Fury against the Muhammad Ali's, the Lennox Lewis's. It's very, very hard because these fighters today in the heavyweight division are so much bigger than the fighters Ali and the guys that he fought, that fought at that time. I mean, would you give Joe Fraser any kind of shot with a, with a Tyson Fury? Probably not. He's too, too little. Mike Tyson is too little. But again, uh, Unless you saw them fight, you wouldn't know definitively that they couldn't do it. Why do you think these taller and heavier fighters are, are dominating the division now and that didn't happen 20, 30 years ago? Because look at where they come from. In the United States, 
you don't get these big athletic guys in the heavyweight division, maybe with the exception of Wilder. And the reason for that is, is look what uh, pro football is paying, pro basketball. That's where the talent is going. Now you go to Europe and the UK, and and the UK, they have one sport that where they can make a lot of money, and that's soccer. And big guys can't play soccer because they're not agile enough. So they the big good athletic guys go into boxing. And that's why you get so many big guys, uh, but they generally come from the UK and from Europe. Shakur Stevenson had a big win uh, about a month and a half ago. What's next for Shakur? Shakur is coming back in September. We'll announce where and the date uh, probably next week, the week after, but he'll be back in the ring in September. Terrific, terrific talent. Great, great fighter. Going to match him really tough. But Shakur Stevenson is really the goods. And in terms of women uh, fighting, uh, you know, there was a discussion about how many rounds they should fight. How many rounds should it be and why? Uh, I, I think the rounds that it should be okay the way they are. But I think the round should be three minutes. You know, I don't see any reason why not. I mean, you, you watch professional men's boxing. The most interesting part of a fight is the last minute of every round. Now, the women don't get that available to them. They only fight two minutes. But, again, I talked to Lou DiBella the other night, and he thinks we should stay with two minutes. But, so, but again... There are some terrific women fighters. Last week, I sat next to that Amanda uh, Serrano, terrific young lady, ter very good athlete. Uh, we have Michaela Mayer, who really does boxing proud. Uh, so there's a place for women's boxing. Final question. Do you think uh, extending uh, rounds of women's boxing would create greater excitement in, in women's boxing. I certainly believe that. I, that's my opinion. Now, uh, saying that, other people have other opinions, but I really believe that it would help women boxing if they fought three-minute rounds. Thanks a lot, Bob Aram with Seconds Out. Uh, Darrell Jatch Johnson, we appreciate your time, Bob. You're very welcome.